Everyday people ask me about my special little box right here that I use to test all of my LEDs. Now that's just one tool that I use to power things up, but you can also buy specifically power supplies to light up your LEDs. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do something that you probably already have that you don't have to go buy, and you can use that to power up the LEDs. This is my old Xbox 360, like a lot of you might have, and this is the power brick, the power supply that sends power to an Xbox. We're gonna chop this thing up and make it power up all the angel eyes, or the little LED bulbs, or whatever it is that we wanna test even full headlights, there's enough amps and enough voltage from this power brick that it's gonna make it perfect for what we're doing today on How Tuesday. Now before we start talking about the Xbox, the thing that I want to say, a lot of people use power supplies from a computer. This is also capable of putting out 12 volts, but this only has 12 amps. Then there's this big scary monster. This will light stuff on fire. This puts out 40 amps. This is better for HIDs and things that have a very, very high need for amperage. But what I'm gonna show you right now is how to do the Xbox power brick. And this thing looks like it puts out a total of 14.2 amps at 12 volts. So that's really, really good if you just want to have some something to power up things like LEDs and maybe not HIDs because they require so much more power. There's actually three different types of these power bricks. This is the one in the middle. It has 175 watts. There's also one with a little less, also one with a little bit more. But what I'm gonna do first is, first I'm actually gonna show you all the tools that I use and then I'm gonna clip the, the little end of this thing off. So let's start with, we've got our power brick. We've got our power wire that's gonna go into that. And then I'm gonna add some wire that I crimp on with some connectors, strip some wire. That's basically it though. Just some basic tools that you need. And we're gonna start off by taking the end. We're just gonna clip this little connector off and I'm gonna do it a little bit further up on here so that I have a little bit of a stretch. I don't really know a whole lot about ferrite beads, but apparently this little dude uh, is important and you can watch other boring nerd videos about why that matters. But I'm just gonna clip after that so that we keep it in place, all right? Okay, now we've actually got something where we can work with it. So we've got this whole bundle of wires. So what I actually wanna do is I'm gonna strip all of this wire down and I know that there's some little ground shielding just underneath this vinyl. So I'm gonna grab a razor blade, slice that open, remove it all, and I'm gonna get some heat shrink so that when I add the new wire to it, it's gonna all be connected and we're not gonna have to worry about anything shocking or connecting inside. All right, so this, we don't need any of, I'm just gonna use the little flush cutters to cut that off. And this is what I know to be the case. There's all this extra crap in here that doesn't matter to us. But what I've seen every other person do is they remove all of the excess stuff, like all this white plastic. We're gonna clip that just to make sure it's all nice and clean in here. Uh, I didn't see the shielding that I expected to see, so maybe mine just sucks, or maybe it's because it's not the super high wattage one. But I know that we have to bridge these two wires right here so that as soon as this thing sees power, when you plug it in, it's gonna automatically output to these yellow wires and then the ground to the black wires. So first thing that we wanna do is strip those and then twist them together and we'll just move those out of the way next. So this is kind of the basic look about how we're gonna be. And I just wanna strip all these yellow ones and then bring them together. The black ones bring them together and then that's what we're actually gonna solder directly to this power and ground uh, cable stuff. So this really comes in handy. I've made some videos. I'm gonna link up in the description the video of if you're just getting started, some of the tools that you might need. And this is gonna be like the cheap version of the power supply that I mentioned in that video. How come you have to twist them together instead of using individually? Okay, so I don't know if there's any specific demand inside of this thing that's going to certain wires based on the little plug. Like let's say that one of those pins needed twice as much juice or something going to it. I don't know, but I know that every single time I see any of these videos, people are making it simple by twisting the output wires together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. I want this thing to be super, super basic so that I'm not worried about it overheating or having any issues. And the cool thing is if anything does 
twist and ground and touch or anything like it's not supposed to, we'll actually be able to see the little indicator light on this thing and it will protect itself. Not only does it have a fan built in where it's got like a little intake right here for, for air to come in, but it's also got that little indicator LED light for us. So we're gonna turn this thing on in just a minute after we hook up the next wires and then specifically like touch the wires together so we can see what happens and how this protects itself. So I'm actually just gonna crimp these little blue connectors onto these. I think this might actually end up being a little bit more, uh, a little bit more practical for this particular little workaround here. So if you're not a big fan of soldering to everything and heat shrinking and all of that, no big deal. Just make sure that you crimp these things on properly instead of using the wrong part of the crimp tool. Okay, so we've got that. I am gonna solder this really quick and I'm just gonna throw this little piece of heat shrink on there so that it's not gonna bridge anything else out. And then we're gonna plug it in and test it. Hook it up to my quad hands real quick. All right, good old quad hand saves the day. This is actually some marine heat shrink with some adhesive on there, so it's not gonna move around a bunch and it'll just collapse on itself really nice, so. Boom. Okay, so we should be safe. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in now and then we'll do a couple little tests with it. So weird that that's only got two wires. All right, is it gonna, is it gonna zap me? I am not zapped. Not at all. But let's, let's see what happens if I Oh, shit. that wasn't good. <laughs> well, I thought it was supposed to like, you know, have like built in protection and don't do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm curious. Like wh when does this thing shut off and when does it zap itself? Okay. Well, this is the wire that I'm going to add to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp the connectors onto it as well. And then we are going to add some alligator clips. Now on these wires, I have them cut at different sections so that the chances of these things bridging like we just saw me do like a, a dumbass a second ago, hopefully isn't gonna happen later. And I don't really like these little silicone covers, but whatever. Okay, now this might be triggering Oh, that could totally touch itself still. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna actually solder this connection on there because these things break pretty often, but I'm not gonna solder on this side, just on that side so that it can still maintain flexibility. All right, here's the moment of the truths. Am I going to be zapped again? This is what I think. I honestly think that this should, to some extent, not, hey, that's what we wanted to see before. Look at that. Well, I wonder why it freaked out before. Cause that's what I thought was gonna happen, but it did not. And then, so I understand that all I have to do to reset it is the unplugger and plug it back in. And now it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and that's the end of the video. I'll see you next time. One, two, three, four, seven. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, well, that'll work. Let's test some GTR lightning bolts. There's white. Okay, okay. There's amber. Okay, so now that we know everything's testing fine, it's putting out power, it's not zapping itself. Boom, check out this fly ride bulb. Looks super freaking bright. Ah, I can't see anything right now. Uh, so this is just an 1156 bulb and it is super, super bright at the 11.2 volts or whatever that thing's putting out. I think a lot of people have these little Xbox guys laying around and they're not doing anything for you and you're popping the hood and connecting things to your battery to test to see if it works. So I hope this video helps you out. Put down in the comments below if you have one of these things and you're thinking about maybe doing this modification to it as well. Oh, and also stay tuned, watch, I'm gonna link up the video to this one. Let me know if you understood, it seemed to upset a lot of people, but I think you should understand after watching this one, if you're trying to power something up and not give it more power than it would normally see on the car, you could use something like this to test on the bench and it'll be fine. But give me your comments on that video too.